Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at our third example of how to use the method of undetermined coefficients. In this case, the function here on the right side of the equation is a trigonometric function. So again, we know that the solution is going to be the sum of the homogeneous part of the solution plus the particular solution. And again, we're starting out with getting the homogeneous part of the solution by turning this into a, a homogeneous equation. The homogeneous equation will be equal to y double prime minus 5y prime plus 4y is equal to 0. We simply replace this by 0 and then find the solution to that. We can do that by using the characteristic equation, which is equal to r squared minus 5 times r plus 4 equals 0. And this can be easily solved like any quadratic equation like that. We can, in this case, we can factor this. This will be r minus 4 times r minus 1. So therefore, the two roots, r1 is equal to 4 and r2 is equal to 1 which allows us to come up with the homogeneous part of the solution. So y homogeneous is equal to c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the t. So there's the homogeneous part of the solution, just like we did on the previous couple of videos. We didn't want to concentrate on that. We wanted to figure out how to solve the non-homogeneous part, the particular part of the solution. So we look at this function g of t, and we notice it's a trigonometric function, which means the general format of that function will look as follows. The particular part of the solution, we'll look at a times the cosine of 2t plus b times the sine of 2t. Even though we don't have a sine function in here, we want to represent both the cosine and the sine to come up with the correct solution, the correct particular solution. Now what we try to do is find the two undetermined coefficients a and b. Again, to do that, we take the first and second derivative of this particular part of the solution and we plug those into the original equation. y particular prime is going to be equal to, well, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine times the derivative of the angle, which is 2. So we get minus 2a times the sine of 2t. And here the derivative of the sine is a cosine, so it's plus 2b times the cosine of 2t. We take the derivative again, so second derivative. Here the derivative of the sine is a cosine. Again, we have to multiply that times the derivative of the angle, which is 2. So we get minus 4a times the cosine of 2t. And here the derivative of the cosine is a negative sine, so it's minus 4b times the sine of 2t. Now we're ready to plug that into the original equation. It'll get to be quite long, but that's quite all right. So first we have y double prime, which is equal to this. So we have minus 4a cosine of 2t. So that's what I'm doing here, so we know where it came from. So we're using that equation, we're plugging in all the various components minus 4b times the sine of 2t. Let me put that in brackets because that is y double prime. Minus 5 times y prime, which is right here. This is minus 2a times the sine of 2t plus 2b times the cosine of 2t. Now we take plus 4 times y, which is right here. So plus 4 times y, which is a times the cosine of 2t plus b times the sine of 2t. And we set that equal to the right side, which is 5 times the cosine of 2t. Notice we only have the cosine of 2t on the right side. We don't have a sine of 2t to the, on the right side, which means if I add all the sine terms together, I should set those equal to 0. If I add all the cosine terms together, they should equal 5. At least the coefficients of them should equal 5. So let's, let's do the cosine first. So we have a cosine term here. We have a cosine term here. And we have a cosine term there. So let's add those together. We have minus 4a, so we have minus 4a. Here we have a minus 5 times a plus 2, that's a minus 10b, so minus 10b. 
And let's see, what else do we have? We have four times B, oh, no, we have four times A, because we're multiplying the cosine term, so plus four times A. And we multiply that times the cosine of 2T. We added the cosine term here, the cosine term here, and the cosine term here, and we set that equal to the right side, which is five times the cosine of 2T. So that tells us that what's inside the brackets here must equal five. So we have a minus 4A and a plus 4A that cancels. That means that minus 10B is equal to five, or B is equal to minus one half. So now we have the value of the undetermined coefficient B. Now we have to do the same for A. So we're going to now group all the other terms together, the sine terms. Here we get minus 4B and minus 5 times a minus 2A, that's a plus 10A. And a 4 times B, that would be plus 4B. All multiplied together times the sine of 2T equals and since we don't have a sine of 2t on the right side of the equation, we have to set that equal to 0. Now notice we have a minus 4b and a plus 4b, those cancel out, which means we end up with 10a is equal to 0, which means a is equal to 0. So the undetermined coefficient a is actually equal to 0, which means the particular solution can now be written here. This is equal to 0 plus b times the sine of 2t, and b is minus 1 half. It's kind of interesting to see that even though we had a cosine function here in the original differential equation, the particular solution is actually a sine function. But now that we have both the homogeneous portion of the solution and the particular solution right here, we can add them together to get the full solution, and the solution to the differential equation is going to be the homogeneous part right here, which is C1 e to the 4t plus C2 e to the t, and then add to that the particular solution minus 1 half times the sine of 2t, so, and that is then the complete solution of the non-homogeneous differential equation. And here you have another example of how we can determine the undetermined coefficients in the case that we have a trigonometric function on the right side of the differential equation, and that's how it's done.